Now you can uh, concoct any type of bracket that you might need and this may not be enough of a bracket. I might need something else down uh, uh, farther down because there might be some vibration. I don't know yet till I run it. But taking this off you can see how I made this. Just a piece of flat stock with some holes drilled into it. Uh, bolted into this swing arm here I'll call it. And then a piece of one inch, one inch stock and I milled a little flat on it so it will be easier to weld and I'll just put a little tack weld here and here, here and here and down here. It won't take much. So uh, the next time you see me I'm going to be out in the garage but before I do that let me cut real quick to about a one minute clip at the auction two days ago showing that other Logan lathe. The audio is terrible. It was taken with my phone and the sun is so bright that there's a lot of harsh shadows so it's not a good clip but but take a look at this for those of you who say there aren't any lathes around well I, I just see them all the time and I was only at that auction for 15 minutes it was so blame cold and I had no intentions of buying it although I was interested in some of the attachments that you will see in this clip so let's cut to that right now there's a nice little lathe for sale. That's a Logan with the Ward's badge. Plenty of accessories down here. This is just for you guys that say there's no more lathes for sale. They're hard to find. They're, they're everywhere. But you have to wait for somebody to die. I'm out in the garage and it's been over a week since that last clip and I'm sick and tired of waiting. It's still only 45 degrees here in Illinois, April 10th or so. And I want to get started so uh, I got the old uh, Lincoln MIG welder fired up ready to go cord run out 220 cord and I'll go ahead and uh, tack weld this thing up well that ought to hold it it's not pretty but it'll be strong enough so let's go on down to the basement and fit it up well there it is all bolted down and ready to go and as poor planning would have had it one of my wells was an interference and rubbed on the uh, pulley wheel here. I had to take it back off and, well, there was so much to remove, I put it in the milling machine and milled it down with an old milling cutter. Also on the end here, the, that uh, weld overlapped a little bit on the end, so I put that on the belt sander and dressed it down. And I had this old plastic knob, Bakelite, I think it is, uh, in my junk drawer with a 3 8 thread on it, so that's going to be my knob, although a bolt or a stud or something would have served just as well. Perhaps you can now understand a little better of what I'm doing here as far as clamping this up, but the big plate is clamped onto the aluminum plate and then using these two set screws back here which are out of view but you saw them before, they are pushing the curved piece up against that, holding it in place while I tack welded. I'm just going to put a weld there and work my way around and as I get into the areas here where there's more of a gap like where the screwdriver is right now I will reposition everything and force that up against uh, as well as I can. There'll still be a little ca a gap there because we have straight bends here rather than a true curve but I think it's going to work all right so let me put a couple tacks in there and see what it looks like. In this close-up, watch me squeeze out the gap as I go right on the other side and tighten one of these screws. Can you see that move in? I'll tighten the other one. Uh, 
it's pretty nice and tight now I can put another weld right in here let me stop just for a minute here and take a look at this and uh, that morning sun sure is harsh coming in at an angle from the east it's all, still only 8 o'clock in the morning but you can see I've got a series of uh, short wells call them tacks or whatever and working my way around I'm about over halfway around and then looking at it from this side you can see that it's doing just what I want it to and now I'll continue and here I am making the last weld So much for that. Now I'm ready for the other piece. I'm back in the shop to make uh, some adjustments and do a little cutting as I start to attach the second piece. And th these are way too long, so I'm going to trim that one now. And I'll do that on the bandsaw, but I'm just going to bring that up against that. And boy, there's quite a gap in there. I hope my fixture will tighten that down, but uh, I will. For now, cut this off right here on the bandsaw. Nice and square, I hope. And then the other one I will cut as I wrap it around and determine how long it needs to be so I have a reasonably good fit. Here's how I make that cut on the bandsaw, which I hope will give me a square cut. My neighbor Tommy's here to break up the monotony, but I'm on the second piece now, and I uh, got three or four welds there, and I'm working my way around that radius, and which is the the real hard spot. I put just a little tack weld right there, and now that I've worked my way pretty much all the way around, time to go downstairs and make this cut, and then the last few wells. Oop, that's hot. The cut has been made. I'm going to be just a little shy there because I cut through both pieces at the same time, which of course left the kerf. I thought maybe it would wrap around and push up against there, but I'm a little short, I guess. But here's my last hurrah that's all pulled up pretty well. So I'll put three little wells in there and, and, and one here and I'm done. Alright, the guard is basically done. You see the inside of it? Just some blue marks on the outside. Now the reason for this little hole here is that when I put this on, I can locate uh, the center of the shaft, which I put a white spot on, through the keyhole here. and. I'm, and that way I have oriented this the way I want it and I'm going to center the hub pretty well within this hole. In order to make the hole for mounting it, in this piece I have already uh, put a transfer screw and you've seen me use transfer screws in uh, many other videos so I'm not going to get into that but this is a 3 8 16 transfer screw so I'll get that all lined up give it a good whack with the mallet so that I got a center punch mark and then I'll drill the hole and we'll put it on there and see how flimsy or how sturdy it is. There's one thing I need to clarify from a few moments ago that this is not a transfer screw this is the holder and the wrench for transfer screws and there's five more in there this is a transfer screw. And I've talked about that in other videos. Alright, I have the guard mounted and just as I thought it's a little flimsier than what I wanted but I, I did kind of suspect that, you know, it vibrates like a tuning fork. 
So I got to have some kind of brace. Also, I can't allow it to swing back and forth like that, so there needs to be some provision for that. But that aside, it's going to be just fine. And of course, I'm going to cover that yet. We'll talk about that in a little while. But in the meantime, I've got to think about what kind of bracing that I want to do, and do I need to uh, weld it on or screw it on. And the problem here is that this thing pivots, as you can see. And because of that, I can't put any kind of braces down here, because it's going to prevent it from swinging. So the brace will have to be up here on the top side, on, on this shaft side, where I'd like to have some kind of a... Um, brace down here, but that isn't going to do, but just so I get some of that springiness out of there. Well, I've been struggling with this blamed thing for over an hour, and here's what I came up with. I got it all jury-rigged and clamped and ready to take off and go back out in the garage and weld it all up. So, take a look at this. The whole idea here is I wanted this thing to be wrench free, but in the end I'm going to need uh, a screw up here, so I might as well have used a screw down here, but here's, here's what I got. A piece of this iron right here bolted onto this piece that I made here, and I hope that that's sturdy, but you know the longer it is, the less sturdy it is. Maybe I should have made it out of angle iron to be stiffer. Then another uh, piece here, and there'll be a bolt going through there. This is all just held together with vice grips for now, so I can take it off. This is bolted on, but I think I'll put a weld on there as well, when I, as long as I'm going out, out in the garage. And one thing I had to take into consideration here, if I ever use uh, the belt on uh, the outer part here, that is about a half inch thick so I had to have clearance for all of that and this has to clear that so this is a little shorter than what I would have wanted but that's the general idea and I think that'll stiffen it up and it's just gonna have to be good enough so I'll take that off and and weld it uh, right now and then I'm, I'm getting kinda hungry I've been working since 7 this morning so I'm gonna stop and take a well needed break for an old man and here's what that ridiculous looking contraption looks like. I'm going to weld it down here and up here. Notice I used the temporary piece of angle iron as a little uh, angle to hold it while I weld it. Then there'll be a hole drilled in here to be located later. Wow, there's a patent pending if I ever saw one. And I must confess to being uh, mildly ashamed of it, but I'm going to go ahead and mount it anyway. But it needs a paint job as well, so I'll take it off again later. Let's see how it works. And there it is. Solid as the rock of Gibraltar. Now one last screw was right up here. Now I know darn well that the safety Nazis are going to squawk about this. So let's go on over to the bench and see how I address that problem. Alright, here's what I came up with. That motor hub shaft, I should say shaft, doesn't really extend this, uh, this far out. Probably only about three quarters of an inch or an inch. So but what I really wanted to do, this is the guard off of my... Uh, Delta belt sander. I wanted something like that. I like the appearance of that. Well, what am I going to do? So I, I went through my wife's kitchen drawers and I came up with this. This is her Cutco soup ladle, and but she caught me. I was going to cut that off right here and bend that a little bit and then fasten it on there. Wouldn't that look great? But I was busted. So then I went to uh, the dollar store, I couldn't find They sell big spoons, but they don't sell these. Of course, I didn't want to spend much, cheap as I am. So I, I waltzed around uh, Dollar General or one of those stores, 
and I came up with this. You know, that's a a sink strainer. It was a buck. That'd be well ventilated. Problem is, it looks like a strainer. I don't like that. But I've got a whole selection of these screen door fasteners, and uh, that would have gone on uh, rather well with these little slits on the side. And that still isn't a bad idea. Paint that up, and you know it would be all right. But continuing my quest, I walked all through the store, and I I found this despicable potted meat as 50 cents. I wouldn't eat that if I was starving to death. But throw that meat out. Well, I was going to give it to Smokey, the cat. You remember Smokey. But that wouldn't look too bad on there. But it, in a way, it looks like a tin can on the end of my guard. So I thought, ah, I, I still don't like that. And I've already wasted several dollars. Well, I went back into the kitchen again. I went through every drawer and cupboard we got upstairs, and there's a lot of them. And finally, I came up with this. Now, that sticks up a little higher than what I thought, but does anybody know what that is? Uh, you're right. It's a muffin tin or a cupcake tin. And uh, one I ruined when I cut it out. It's kind of tricky. This is uh, pretty thin metal, but, you know... Uh, my wife hasn't missed it yet, but I'll put it back in the cupboard. I don't think she'll know the difference. It's just the next time she makes muffins, there'll only be four instead of six. But I thought that was a good idea. Not bad looking. But i got to drill a couple real tiny screws, screw holes, and I'm going to fasten it on with um, number 440 or 540 screws. Too thin to weld. So let me do that, and I'll get right back to you. I can't say I'm going to do it off camera. Several people got mad saying, uh, stop doing things off camera. We want to see all of it. Well, this video is running too long the way it is. I just recalled something. I guess I wasn't going to show this, but remember a long time ago when I made a series of concentric circles around this two-inch hole here. The reason I did it is that I knew that at some point I would want to locate something and get it... Uh, concentric with this hole so those random circles uh, will serve the purpose of helping me to find the center here so if I'm just close to one of them that I that I pick I am on the center of this is on the center of this hole and I've already drilled some little holes there and I will be using some tiny little 440 screws. Well there it is ladies and gentlemen it's ready to go to the paint shop. It's a little heavier than what I would have wanted but you know I use whatever materials I can find and uh, it would be nice if I had expanded metal in there. Now I'm going to make another one of these for the South Bend lathe in another video, so be sure and watch that. And I'll be showing you how I make uh, the bends, and it, it'll be a different method than this. But, you know, the uh, making the brake bends like this, with a series of straight bends, is not bad looking. Not bad looking at all. So, she's going to get a coat of paint, and so is the other patent pending uh, bracket. At the rust oleum. It's not going to match Logan, but it's it's what I got, and it's called Smoke Gray. I really wish I could get some of that nice looking uh, Logan or Montgomery Ward paint, but uh, all right. Let me go paint that, and I'll get back to you tomorrow. It's a new day, and the last day of this build. There's only a few minutes left of this video, and I've got the guard back from the paint shop and my Rube Goldberg bracket here doesn't look quite as bad now that it's painted but it's still well it, it won't really show up when it's mounted on the machine but here's the guard itself with the cupcake on the top and I don't know the jury's still out on that I'm sure some of you are gonna say that you have a better idea for this nobulated thing
You tell me. All right, let's step over to the Logan and get it mounted. Here it is from the back side. I can get my hand around there. You can see that I got plenty of clearance right here and here, even if I put that V-belt on the larger pulley. There's my bracket and how that uh, top bolt works and stiffens it. You can see it's really quite stiff and sturdy. Now there's no way of protecting uh, from that belt. Let's see what it looks like when I turn it on. But there's something inherently dangerous about machine tools. You can't get around it. Here's what it looks like from the operator's perspective. And you can see how the bracket is constructed. To give you ideas if you ever have to do something like this. And notice that it still swings and pivots just fine when I uh, loosen up the belt. I must say the fresh paint smells pretty good. Well, there it is, the completed guard for the Logan 10-inch Powercraft lathe, all painted up with the cupcake protector. And you know what? Uh, I really don't like the color, or maybe it would look right, all right if the entire lathe was that color, but the, I rather like this uh, bluish gray color here, battleship gray or whatever it is that, uh, that they use. And I'm not sure if that's a Logan color or if we're painted that way for Monkey Wards, but that completes the two-part uh, video build of the guard. Hope you enjoyed it, and watch later on in case I do a similar build for the South Bend lathe, but it'll be a different size, and I'll make the bends by a different method. Hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, be sure and watch my other videos. This is Tubal Kane saying so long for now.